Hello everyone, today we're continuing our deep dive of Richard Dawkins and Yan Wong's book, The Ancestor's Tale. In this episode, we're going to be discussing hybridization between different species of humans. So let's jump right in. Between 800,000 and 700,000 years ago, the lineage leading to us and the lineage leading to Neanderthals and Denisovans split. Some researchers have argued that the species ancestral to both our lineages was Homo heidelbergensis, and further that we modern humans, Neanderthals and Denisovans, comprise three separate species, Homo sapiens, Homo neanderthalensis, and Homo altaiensis, respectively. The specific name for Denisovans comes from their location of discovery, the Altai Mountains in Russia. The genetic fossils of Denisovans have been found elsewhere, interestingly, and we'll return to that shortly. First, since we've spent the previous four episodes discussing Homo sapiens, we'll turn to Neanderthals here. The very first Neanderthal fossils were discovered in Belgium in 1829, though they were thought to be bones that belonged to our species, perhaps even a soldier lost from one of Napoleon's armies. The first Neanderthal fossils that were positively identified as belonging to a type separate from modern humans were found in Neander Valley, Germany in 1856, and named Neanderthal I. Neanderthal is just German for Neander Valley. Since then, a lot more Neanderthals have been found, so we now know they ranged into Eurasia, as far east as Siberia, as far west as Spain, and as far south as the Middle East. In 2010, a team of researchers published the Neanderthal genome using bones from three individuals that lived about 40,000 years ago, and this showed decisively that Neanderthals do not fall within the range of extant human genetic diversity. Neanderthals nest genetically sister to modern humans. As a result, ideas like Neanderthals being just weak, sickly modern humans or that Neanderthals represent a group of devolved humans can be dismissed. In Neanderthals, genetic evidence indicates that, quote, genes involved in metabolism and in cognitive and skeletal development, close quote, underwent positive selection. But there was another twist, a twist which answers the question posed in the previous episode. There appears to be the case that in some regions of the genome, many non-Africans are more similar to Neanderthals than they are to Africans. How can this be the case if non-Africans and African Homo sapiens are more closely related than either are to Neanderthals? Simple. There was interbreeding between non-Africans and Neanderthals. This process of DNA entering from one population to another is called introgression. That 2010 study confirms this, documenting that Neanderthals are equally closely related to Europeans and East Asians, but share more alleles and more single nucleotide polymorphisms generally, with non-Africans than with Africans. That doesn't mean Africans have no Neanderthal DNA in them. Remember from the Tasmanian's tale that all extant humans share common ancestry going back just a few thousands of years ago. This meant that some lines of ancestors and descendants go back to Africa, not just out of Africa. Therefore, all humans have some Neanderthal DNA in them. In fact, a 2013 study concludes that 3.4 to 7.9% of the genome of humans of Eurasian descent is Neanderthal genes, and a 2014 study argues that the sum total of the Neanderthal genome preserved in extant humans is upwards of 20%. To avoid any confusion, this doesn't mean that some individuals are 20% Neanderthal. It means that 20% of the Neanderthal genome is scattered across the current human population. Some of these genetic regions are more common than others. There are some interesting patterns about which regions are more common and which are rare or absent. For example, Neanderthal regions that occur at relatively high frequencies contain certain genes that are involved in keratin formation and the immune system. Furthermore, regions that have lower frequencies are often rich in genes. Interestingly, the X chromosome is nearly devoid of Neanderthal DNA, about five times less compared to the autosomes. Plus, no modern humans seem to carry a Neanderthal Y chromosome or Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA. 
the introgression of Neanderthal DNA into the sapien population was likely largely affected by genetic drift, but the fact that some regions are more represented than others indicates that selection or other factors were involved as well. A lack of Neanderthal DNA in the X chromosome could indicate that hybridization between the two species was sex biased, specifically male Neanderthals and female sapiens hooking up was more common than the converse. Since males only pass on the X chromosome to about half of their offspring, this sex bias could mean that the X chromosome from Neanderthals was underrepresented among F1 hybrids. This bias for Neanderthal fathers in hybridization could also explain why no humans carry Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA, which is passed only by the mother. Alternatively or additionally, the introgression of Neanderthal X chromosomes was hindered by purifying selection, meaning the hybrids and their descendants whose X chromosomes were more Neanderthal than sapiens had relatively lower reproductive rates. But why? Genes that affect male fertility are often found on the X chromosome. Within the proper genetic background, they don't negatively affect fertility, but it could when the genetic background changes as it does with hybridization. Thus, male F1 hybrids who inherited a whole Neanderthal X chromosome could have had lower fertility. Furthermore, when F1 hybrid females pass their Neanderthal X chromosomes, it could have caused similar fertility problems in male descendants. This would be consistent with what is known as Haldane's rule, which states that if among hybrid offspring one sex is non-viable or sterile, that sex is most likely heterogametic, the sex that is determined by two different sex chromosomes. This reduction in male fertility of hybrids and their offspring would have skewed the introgression of Neanderthal DNA to go through matrilineal lines, i.e. from mother to daughter to granddaughter, and so on. Through these lines, the X chromosomes underwent recombination, and recombinant X chromosomes that had less Neanderthal DNA were less likely to reduce male sterility, and thus were more likely to be passed on. If the introgression of Neanderthal DNA was skewed by selection to go through a line of female ancestors, this could also explain why no human today has a Neanderthal Y chromosome. Interestingly, the Y chromosome itself could also contain genes that have interfered with introgression. As the 2016 paper by Mendez et al. on the divergence of Neanderthal and modern human Y chromosomes notes, the Y chromosome contains genes for male-specific minor histocompatibility antigens. They show that in Neanderthal Y chromosomes, some of these genes were mutated. These mutated antigens could have elicited maternal immune responses if the sapien mother was carrying a fetus carrying a Neanderthal Y chromosome. Ultimately, Neanderthals went extinct around 40,000 years ago with the last holdouts living in Spain. Potential causes of their extinction include competition with modern humans, climate change, and disease, and likely they went extinct as a result of all of the above. Sister to Neanderthals is another species of archaic human, the subject of today's tale, the Denisovans. The first fossil of a Denisovan was discovered in 2008, and the paper describing its sequenced mitochondrial genome was published in 2010. The fossil was merely a piece of a finger dating 76,000 to 51,000 years old, but it revealed some startling facts about human evolution. For one thing, researchers learned that there was a third species of human descended from Homo heidelbergensis. However, researchers originally thought that Denisovans were sister to both modern humans and Neanderthals based on mitochondrial DNA. This turned out to be slightly misleading, which can happen when one's data set is too small, as nuclear DNA placed Denisovans and Neanderthals in a clade to the exclusion of modern humans. The nuclear DNA further put the divergence time between Denisovans and Neanderthals at about 640,000 years ago. Various other fragments of Denisovans have been discovered, but no full skeletons to date. Denisovan molars, for instance, are more robust than those of Neanderthals and modern humans, being more like the molars of Homo erectus. And just like the Neanderthals, Denisovans hybridized with other human species. An individual named Denisova 11 is a first-generation offspring of a Neanderthal mother and Denisovan father. And of course, Denisovans interbred with Homo sapiens. The genetic evidence of these events is preserved in the genomes of a widely dispersed group of humans. Australians, New Guineans, Filipinos, Polynesians, Melanesians, and other indigenous members of Oceania. Stranger still, the genetic data suggests Denisovans may have interbred with another, as yet unknown species of hominin, 
which might be why Denisovan mitochondrial DNA suggests an older divergence time from Neanderthals than their nuclear DNA. That's the Denisovans' tale. Multiple closely related human species have interbred within the past million years, and the remains of some of those events are still recorded in us. We all contain pieces of Neanderthals, Denisovans, and other hominin species. That is not surprising. Animal species hybridize all the time, so why should humans be any different? So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.